Welcome to another parent teacher video lesson from the earlygiftedmanual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. And welcome to lesson 53, um, a lesson with my favorite math manipulative pattern blocks. And uh, before we discuss the materials, uh, I'm being, I know I'm being repetitive, but once again, bear with me. I'm uh, in the later stages of a cold that won't go away, so my voice is a little funny and my breathing might be a little labored, but uh, hopefully that won't be a distraction to you. Okay materials for this lesson. Of course, uh, a nice supply of pattern blocks, and usually they come in sets of, of uh, 250. And uh, make sure you get a good set. That's what I can tell you. A nice thick set wood is great if you can afford it. Uh, there's more about that uh, in the early gifted manual. And get more than one set if, if your child really likes to build big and you know sometimes even into three sets. Some kids really like to build big designs with pattern blocks. Um, you will also need the pattern block activity cards and I have a few here that I want to show you very quickly. As you can see they have different designs on them. Different levels of difficulty, we'll talk about that uh, here during the lesson. And um, you will need uh, two pieces of copy paper and a marker. And what you're going to do is you're going to end up with two pieces that look like this. One with a line right down the middle uh, with the, sh the sheet aligned into halves. And of course this one is in quarters and there's a second, as you can see, there's a secondary line going across besides the outline. So this one is in quarters. We'll be using those. And also a very handy thing to have is this uh, 12 by 18 inch foam sheet and it's about an eighth inch thick and you could get this at just about any craft store and why is this a good thing to have? Well, very young kids, their, their fine muscle control is still developing and for some kids it's very difficult to manipulate these together without bumping them all around and they can get frustrated. So the, uh, you know, the, the, the surface of a table is fairly slippery and these cards are even more slippery but uh, when you put it on the foam here they tend to stay in place better so uh, if your child if it looks like he needs one of these by all means use one you could put more than one together if he's working he or she is working very big so uh, that's a 12 by 18 inch 1 8 inch thick foam sheet and the last thing you'll need is just a simple ruler like the ruler that, that we used uh, in earlier lessons. So you can start out by describing these pattern blocks uh, to your child. And uh, as you can see, there are six different pattern blocks. And it's, it's important to say uh, right immediately here that all hexagons are yellow. It's not like there are different colors of each shape. Um, they all have their, each shape has its own individual color, so that's important to know. So you have a yellow hexagon, a red trapezoid, a blue diamond or rhombus, that's a, a word you can introduce to your child, green triangle, this is kind of a beige or a white rhombus, and finally you have an orange square. So. That's how you would introduce um, the pattern blocks to your child. And 
And it's also uh, important to tell them, although they will discover this uh, naturally on their own as they mess around with these, so to speak, that um, each one of these sides is exactly the same length on all of these. For example, let me match this up. As you can see, same length, same length. And these are all like that. So the sides are the same length, with the exception of this one long side on the trapezoid. And that's two, two, uh, double that length, that, uh, that common length that they all share. So that's very important because that's what makes uh, pattern blocks so easy to use in designing and they nest together very well. So let's see, what else could I tell you? I think that, that pretty much uh, runs it in terms of uh, descriptions. Um, so let's start out like this. Let's start out with a four block set. So I'm going to remove the white or beige rhombus and the orange square and you'll see why shortly and just work with these four. So once again you want to, while your child's working, anytime he's working or when you're beginning to work with these, um, make him or her say what each block is and that's using the color and the shape. Um, yellow, a hexagon, red trapezoid, blue diamond or rhombus, and green triangle. So um, what are the basic principles of working with pattern blocks and tiling, so to speak, uh, with pattern blocks? Well, I'll go back to what I said earlier. The sides are the same length, so they nest together quite well. So the first thing you really want to do is just, uh, like we've done with some of these other manipulatives, is just allow your child to experiment. You can leave the room. <laughs> you know, check, check in on him or her once in a while, and they might yell out, hey, uh, I need your help, but probably not, and just let them mess around with these for a while, and, uh, and they'll start to get a feel for what you can do with pattern blocks. They might start, for example, start doing something like this, just pulling, pulling blocks out here, and just nesting them together. And some kids will be really good at, at nestling them together. Others will, um, for whatever reason, because all kids are different, they might want to spread them out and not be so into nesting them out like this. Well, uh, there's no reason to impose your will on them. Just observe it. And as we get into uh, some of the exercises here later in the uh, in the lesson, they will begin to understand how, how these all go together. So let's see, what else could I put in here? There you go. I mean, there's just, there's so many different ways you can go here. It just goes on and on. You can keep building with them. And your child, as he sees little openings like this, will find find things to put in. Remember, right now we're only working with uh, four blocks, not six. And then finally, perhaps, um, uh, after he's done this for a while, you might add the next two shapes. And this will change things, and uh, um, uh, they're not quite as nestable as these, but nevertheless, it, it makes for some interesting uh, types of changes. So, you know, you can start doing something like this. And uh, let's see, maybe put in something like that. And look, now you find spaces for this shape. It's totally amazing. Uh, let's see what would happen if we do there, another square. See, you could fit two of these in an opening like this. So your child will just be messing around, and, and he or she may do some wilder things than this. For example, they may be putting them on edge, stacking them up. Like I said, they may not choose to nest them right away. That's okay. Just let them play for a while, get the feel of these pattern blocks and their properties and what, you can, and what they can do with them. 
And now let's work with the pattern block activity cards. And I have uh, probably, uh, I think I have two different sets I've combined here, so they might look a little different. Uh, um, let's see, what do we have here? This, is, this one is called Grapes, and as you can see, there's a pattern block design that kind of uh, looks like a bunch of, of grapes. So uh, the first, probably the first uh, official activity uh, you could do with your child when it comes to working with pattern blocks is to simply um, matching blocks to one of these cards. And here's how you do it with this one. As you can see, placing the yellow hexagons where where the map tells you to, where the outline of the yellow hexagons are. Um, I'll try to do this pretty fast here. And of course, this is a, a very simple one, as I, as I sh will show you in a minute. It gets a little bit more complex. And one, two, three, of course, uh, it was pretty easy for me. It's good, obviously it's going to take your child a lot longer, and they may really be struggling hard to get these from skittering all over the paper. So you probably may have to give uh, your child a little bit of help if that is in fact the case. So um, you can match blocks to a card. Let me take these off. I'll show you some other cards. That's a simple one. Now here's one that's still only two colors, but obviously more complex. And here's an airplane. Last one was a turtle. Here's an airplane you can make. Um, looks like three colors there. And as you can see, uh, more and more complex. There's a genie. There's a, a teepee. Here's a kind of a hard one, a butterfly. Um, a car, that's a pretty challenging one to do. And yeah, look at this basketball player. So you get the idea. Um, uh, you can buy sets of these and they're even free on the web. Uh, so they're called pattern block maps. And uh, you use them the same way I did the uh, original one here with the grapes. And the next step you would want to take, and, and your child probably will not spend much time on that step because obviously it's not the most challenging step, but then to up the challenge, have your child replicate the design from a card. In other words, off the card. So they'd have to do something like this. And as you can see, that totally ups the difficulty level. This, this will probably be uh, quite challenging for most kids anyway. So how am I doing? <laughs> Let's see, and here's the, uh, the stem. See, I need one more green one here. And there it is, uh, obviously a, a step up in challenges. And once again, uh, uh, once your child can do this simple one, you can go on to more challenging ones like the, the ones I just showed you. Um, let's see, where can we go from there after replicating a design? Uh, we could go to some more advanced cards. So let me put these away. Let me show you some more advanced cards bring these in here. And as you can see, that's obviously uh, a little bit more complicated than what we've already seen. But nevertheless, everything is spelled out. All the outlines and the colors are there. Now here's one, same thing, except a bit of the outline here is gone from these rhombuses. So that's a little harder. Um, and now look at this one. Uh, they've taken out some of the lines. So that should increase uh, the difficulty level, whether your child is working right on the map or replicating it, for that matter. And now we move to cards that have no color. So 
you know that that might make it a bit more difficult for your child but nevertheless the outline is there so there are cards that have no color on them and um, then um, if, if you get uh, a good set of pattern block cards, and I've recommended a few, on, uh, or at least one on the early gifted manual. You get really cool things like this, where the challenge really gets uh, upped quite a bit. As you can see, make the shape, shape using five blocks, then make it using ten blocks. So now uh, your child has entered a realm where they really have to use their intelligence to uh, to and well in effect they're puzzles to solve these puzzles that's a pretty easy one um, see and, and I'll go through them and show you how they get progressively more difficult make this shape using each color or block at least once make the shape using only one yellow and blue blocks and I, I don't think I'll read them all but uh, as you can see uh, as we go here more and more challenging and now you know here's a here's one that's definitely you have to use more blocks to do it still more make the shape using 30 blocks I give you a little hint 12 or blue I love this one make the shape using the greatest number of blocks then make it using the least number there's a good challenge for a three to seven year old and uh, perhaps uh, these may be too difficult these are obviously advanced so if they're too difficult for your child, no, no reason torturing them. Just let it be for a while. But uh, some kids may be ready for these. Certainly some of my kindergarten kids were ready to take these on. Not a lot of them, but a, a couple of them. And there's even one that, where you can do patterns. Uh, and, you know, we, we kind of did that in one lesson with the pattern blocks. And one that you can... Uh, work on symmetry so there you go uh, those are called the pattern block activity cards